Good day learners and welcome to today's video where we are looking at phase two of your cat pet for 2024. So let's go through the document and let's see phase two. Now this is obviously the DBE pet. Um, this is worth 44 marks. So that's counting for about 29% of the 150 mark total. So let's go down. You remember what your topic is, right? By now, you would have chosen your topic. You've looked at everything there. And let's see now when we go down to phase two, what they need us to do. So remember, in phase one, that is what you needed to sort out. Then in phase two, this is now the design and implementation of suitable tools for capturing and analysis of data. They're talking a lot there, but let's see what they actually mean. So we need to draw up in phase two and conduct a survey or questionnaire. Now, this can be via an electronic form in Word. Um, you can also uh, do a or create a Google form. The nice thing with the Google form is when you send that out to people and you get your responses, obviously you can see as people are busy filling that in, um, you can extract a spreadsheet from all your data. Okay, so it does help because look at step number two. Design and use a spreadsheet and database to analyze and survey the results. Now, if the Google form is already going to allow you to take that step without you creating it from scratch, why would you not use that? And then you can just format the spreadsheet as you need it. Then you continue refining the final report as needed and you hand it in. Now, that's just an overview. So let's go and look all the way down here to see exactly what they want. Remember, we... We want to make sure that we're ticking off all the boxes. Okay, so first things first, creating a questionnaire and conducting a survey. Let's see what they need. Um, so they want you to collect data and information that will help you answer your research questions. Do you remember those ones that you created? Right. Remember that your survey needs to gather data that will help to answer the research questions. There, They're stating it again. Right. Now, the questions in the questionnaire should help you get the information, uh, people's perceptions and experiences. Um, think of options available in terms of how you're going to administer the questionnaire. Here we go to at least 25 respondents. So, listen very carefully. This now means that your questionnaire, you must have at least 25 people who have completed and or responded and completed the questionnaire, whether it is... Um, a Google form, whether it's an electronic form, whatever you're doing, but you need 25. The main thing you need to remember is that you need at least 25 respondents. Now they do say here, try to reach a cross section of people in terms of age, gender, etc. And they give you a few guidelines. You can create a questionnaire in Word or okay, email in it. That's exactly what we spoke about. You can print it out. You can distribute copies. You can create an online version using, uh, using Google Forms, SurveyMonkey, etc. You need to formulate at least five questions. So remember, this is going out to 25 people. You only need to have a minimum of five questions. That is excluding things like what is your name, gender, age, where do you live? Okay, so besides that information, you need to have five questions. Now, again, watch what they're asking you. Ensure that all the questions are relevant and provide answers to the questions that cannot be found in other sources. So the idea is for you to get more info. Try to create questions where people can choose from an answer list. In other words, closed questions. Remember the difference between a closed and open question. An open question is where everyone's answer can be different in terms of the, the opinion that they are giving on a particular topic. However, closed questions is like, are these curtains blue? Yes or no? Do you know what AI is? Yes or no? Or maybe, right? So you are giving them the options. The closed questions are best when you are wanting to extract data, okay? Um, you will find that the minute you have some open-ended questions in your Google form, um, the results that you're going to get are not going to be too good in terms of what you are looking to do here. 
right keep your mind or keep in mind that the processing of the data will be done in either spreadsheet so we know that already design your questions so that they produce the appropriate data needed and only include biographical data in your processing if it is relevant to the information that's needed to answer the, the research questions okay so if it is important for you in terms of you extracting the data that the ages of the kids or people are there then you need to do that if it's important to have the gender where you're going to be extracting data to say well 50 percent of males over the age of 18 answered yes to this 25 percent of females who answered this question who are below 18 you know gave this answer um, then it becomes important so a questionnaire 25 respondents five questions um, obviously you need to have a professional layout must consist of a maximum of one page obviously with a google form it's going to be slightly different but you can have everything on that one page in a google form um, so please don't hit them with like 20 questions stick to the minimum of five you know if you need six or seven it's fine but um, do check those with your teacher before moving forward okay then they want you to use the data from the questionnaire together with data from other sources identify suitable uh, data for spreadsheet processing identify data so, well whichever one you're going to be using um i actually want to see if you have to use both just want to see in the rubric as well okay uh let's see processing a spreadsheet create a spreadsheet with a meaningful file name that's normal um import your data so if you create in the google form you can do that design and format must be good user friendly all right so it's just really formatting on that uh, you will get extra marks for using formulas so please go and check that out and graphs 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 create meaningful graphs um let's just see here so you need to have graphs in there as well yeah here we go you need two relevant graphs okay so a minimum of two you need to have a summary of your results in a separate worksheet so that spreadsheet must have two worksheets the first one is where all your data is and the second one is where you are having a summary of the data okay so i want to go down to just want to go down to the rubric quickly for phase two so we can make sure of what it is we are required right so there's the questionnaire the quality technicalities around it your spreadsheet your spreadsheet quality your graph spreadsheet complexity with your um, different formulas so that's fine ah so you have to use database okay and they want a table the different fields processing of it and the complexity okay so basically what you are going to do what they are saying to you is that you're going to be creating the question and you're going to take that data you're going to create a spreadsheet from it and you are going to create a database now what you can do and what i've seen done before is create the spreadsheet then you import your spreadsheet into your database right it'll then create a database for you with a table and you can always go and edit that that's probably easier than going to start the whole thing from scratch you need to have one table that table must have at least five fields why five fields because you asked five questions remember the fields need to have appropriate names that's fine and the fields must contain single data units okay so that's all fine then they need to be the appropriate size there needs to be at least one validation rule and text one combo box and one input mask do you see that this is all going to be in the properties of our table in our design view then um, at least 20 appropriate relevant records why are they saying 20 because remember you needed to have 25 respondents okay you need one query then another query yeah you need to have one two three queries okay these need to be relevant queries people you can't just pull random queries all right and then the complexity of the queries you need to go and watch this 
Um, if it's just a simple criteria like that, it means it's a level one. So you are only going to get one mark for that. So the more complex, and I mean, yeah, you can use something like, you know, greater than, less than, or whatever it needs to be. For level two, you can say between or, you know, greater than or in between, or you can use two items there. Then you could be using one where there's a calculation and you see a simple calculated field is going to get you a level three. So if you have three queries and in the first two, you are using these. Um, in the second one, sorry, the first one you are using these two, the second one you are using one year, and maybe in the third one you are using a complex field, then you'll get all four of your marks. Okay? So please just bear that in mind. You can go and create the query, but just bear this in mind as well. And then they want you to generate a report. So they just want one relevant report. It needs to be sorted according to one field and grouped appropriately on one field. Now, remember, you can do this in your wizard. In your report wizard, when you create your report, you can sort and group and do all of that in the wizard. Then it must make or must contain at least one calculation. That you can go and do afterwards. But just going through the wizard will allow you to get three of those four marks and that is how you end up getting everything you need for phase two so i just want to go through this again so we are together as i finish off this video you need to create a questionnaire that must go to 25 people and have a minimum of five questions number two you are going to take that and you are going to take that data and convert that into a spreadsheet and into a database so you're going to have three files you're going to have a questionnaire you're going to have a spreadsheet you're going to have a database okay then with regards to your spreadsheet you need to have obviously it needs to be professionally formatted etc it needs to have calculations i just want to go yeah it needs to have two worksheets one with the data the other one with a summary it needs to have at least two relevant graphs as well with regards to our database you need to have a table with a minimum well one table a minimum of one table with at least five fields um, you need to make sure obviously the appropriate sizes etc but you must have one validation text and rule one combo box one input mask so that's all related to your table and it must have um, while we said five fields, there needs to be at least 20 records. Then your queries, you need to have three queries. And to get the four marks, you need to move on to these four complexity levels. Okay, so you need to see what you actually want to do within those queries. And then lastly, you need to have a report that is sorted according to one field, grouped according to one field, and then has a meaningful calculation in it. So there you go. There's your hand in for phase two questionnaire, um, your spreadsheet, your database, and your report. But obviously, um, these two is in one file. Your spreadsheet is one file. Your questionnaire is one file or the Google form link. And that is what must be submitted to your teacher in that uh, folder. Okay, now they also mention your updated report. Remember the report you are working on? What, what report are you working on? Hmm? You are busy dealing with that, remember that phase one working document? Right? So I just want to go down to the rubric quickly because now they want us to basically update that. So I'm going to see. Yeah, that's, that's within your database. So, okay, they don't mention it there. But I know I just saw that now. I just want to make sure you guys are fully covered. Okay. So they mention here your updated report with your graphs under the finding section. So those graphs that you created in your spreadsheet, 
you've got a heading called findings in your, your word report, that phase one working document that you had in phase one. You're going to copy that and you're going to paste that into your phase two folder. And under the findings section, you are going to um, take a screenshot of your graphs. You're going to put that in there. You're going to label it. And you're just going to have a short description indicating what you've actually found. Okay. What the results of your questionnaire um, were. Right. And that should then be everything for phase two of your 2024 PAT, the DBE version.